Hi. Today I thought we would talk about the 74HC4067 IC, CMOS IC that you can get. It is a 16 channel analog multiplexer demultiplexer, or as the general description there says, it is a single pole 16 trail analog switch. And it is suitable for use in analog or digital 16 to 1 multiplexer demultiplexer applications. The switch features four digital select inputs S0, S1, S2, and S3. 16 independent inputs and outputs, a common input, output, and a digital enable input, which uh, when high switches are turned off. So there seem to be some uh, minor differences depending on who you get these things from. This one claims to have a wide supply voltage range from 2 to 10 volts, but I got another data sheet from Texas Instruments and theirs. Uh, claims to be good for two to six volts operation, so that is uh, quite a little bit lower than the other one. Now the ones I've got uh, are Chinese ones, and I haven't got a clue what their voltage is, but I'm going to be running them at six volts anyway, so uh, it's not a problem. But <clears throat> as you can see, there are some limitations to these things. For a start, they have a um, on resistance from 60 to 80 ohms and which may or may not be uh, a problem depending on what kind of circuit you're dealing with and also they work up to uh, six volts if you want to uh, uh, switch any signals that are more than you know the VCC which in, in if you've got one of these would be 10 volts then obviously you would have an, a problem with these as well. Um, but most of the time, when I am wanting to switch signals, they are only, you know, in, in a few volts or, or maybe at five volts with TTL levels or something like that. And um, they will do just fine. So I found that you can buy bunches of them on like places like AliExpress. 333 the lot 33 cents each because you get 10 of them i have no idea how good these are um, and who actually makes them but i bought a bunch of those so i can uh, play with those but what i actually have done is i have uh, bought some little breakout boards with them on there because you know these things you can't plug them into a breadboard obviously So I got some of these. Um, this is, you get uh, six of them on a little circuit board. And they have a, a bypass capacitor and a pull down resistor on the enable. So you don't have to worry about the enable signal. It's enabled by default. And it breaks out the, the 15 or 16 rather outputs there c0 to c15 uh, the signal uh, pin over here is actually the single input or output which on the data sheet that we're calling y and then we have the so and the s3 for addressable inputs okay so i've put together this little circuit here just for fun six volts is being fed into the circuit a 100 nanofarad capacitor to bypass the um, voltage in case there are some spikes and things on it. A 7555 timer chip. This is a CMOS version of the 555 timer chip. And um, it actually has a, a larger frequency response and it uses less power. And of course, being CMOS, all of the chips here are CMOS, so it seems appropriate to use it. Um, I buy these. 7555 chips most of the time now. I don't use ordinary 555 timers anymore. These things are better. The output of it is like 18.3 kilohertz, which gets fed into the clock input of the 74HC163 chip. Now, that chip is a counter chip. And 
you'll see a pinout of it here. This is actually the LS version, not the HC version, but the pinout is entirely the same, so we can use it. Um, as you can see, we've got pin 2's clock input, and pin 11 to 14 are the Q0123, that are the outputs that we're using. We're not using any of the other features of this chip, which is the parallel input and so on, uh, that it has capabilities of. It just happens to have that I got one of these chips laying around. There are other simpler ones, like a 161, I think. Uh, and I think there's probably half a dozen counter chips that you can use that wouldn't have those inputs. But it doesn't matter. Um, this is what I had lay laying around in my CMOS tray, so I used it. it as you can see over here, um, it is addressing S0 to S3. These are the four address inputs. Those guys here um, select one of 16 channels, depending on the count that is presented here. If it's 0000, zero, zero, zero it would be this input. C0 would be channels to the output. If it is 1111, one, 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 it would be C15 that will be channeled to the output and anything in between. So I've connected all these pins with a ladder of network of 100 ohm resistors they start at or well, ground potential for c0 and then there's a resistor that goes to c1 c2 c3 4 blah 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 blah, blah, blah. and then c15 ends up having the six volts um, attached to it and these voltages are easily evenly divided by these resistors because they're all the same value and it averages about 0.38 volts i think um, i'm using carbon resistors they're five percent so it varies a little bit 0 0.4 0 0.35 you know but it doesn't matter it's close enough so this counts goes from zero to one 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 back to zero again so we are expecting to see um, an output that looks like this with little step staircase staircase uh, signal coming out from C0 to C15 and then when it hits 15 you know 1111 it goes back to zero again so we're expecting it to go back down and then back up again and down again uh, just for fun to see how this chip works um, okay so this is the actual circuit on the breadboard um, the 75 by five chip is over here and it is feeding by this little wire here pin two on this 74163 chip the output of which goes to the input s0 to s1 inputs on this um, multiplexer chip i'm using the little breakout board version because you know you can't plug this little tiny surface mount chip into the breadboard um, and then we have C15 over here and C0 over here. As you can see, C0 goes via wire to ground and C15 goes to the six volts rail. These are the 1500 ohm resistors that are going like that and like that, according to the diagram. And then we have the output over here with a pull-up resistor. Um, I also have a field effect tra transistor sitting here because I've been experimenting with that. I can I can actually feed the output into the input of the uh, gate input on this transistor, and um, the this is a common source setup, so it will actually it looks looks identical to this. So I'm not going to use that for the uh, demo here. There's no point. Um, and so that's it. We'll be using this for the um, for testing to see what what the output is like yeah this is the four outputs or inputs okay so here we have our circuit powered up and connected to our little pocket oscilloscope and let's make the screen larger so we can see what we're dealing with so we can see we have a frequency of 18.3 kilohertz. 
That's the clock signal being generated by the 7555 chip. And big, big 5.92 volts, close to 6 volts because we've got a 6 volt rail. And so now that's connected to the output of the uh, multiplexer and see what we get. Okay, so here it is connected now to the output. And indeed, we've got a nice little stair step signal coming out. Let's make it larger and see what we get in more detail. Okay, there we go. We see 16 neat little steps there and going down just as we were expecting. So this is working well. The frequency is 1.16 kilohertz, which should be the 18.3 kilohertz divided by 16, I guess, something like that. And um, so the circuit is working well. So that's it. Seems to be working well. And you'll probably find me using these um, chips in uh, some upcoming projects when I have to um, multiplex or demultiplex or whatever it is, uh, a number of different signals. Of course, these things are actually sold on these little breakout boards. Uh, for Arduino use as well, because if you've got a microcontroller, um, it only has several uh, analog inputs, and if you want to have more than what the microcontroller has, you could use one of these things in order to expand it with 16 more inputs, which uh, you, are selectable inputs, so um, they are useful for that purpose too. But um, I am likely to use them in all sorts of circuits. So I think this was a good uh, little test and um, got another device that we can keep in mind for our projects. Anyway, until next time.